the feeling is really immense. You could be healed and cleansed. I'm going to introduce you today to treasures in this incredible city that was the heart, the beating heart and the beginning of the Ottoman state. It was an easy enough drive from Istanbul where we live, just two hours. It was raining, which is a real blessing because it's been super hot. Our first stop would be Zindin Kapi or the Dungeon Gate. Wow, <laughs> who's this guy? For more than two centuries, a dark and sinister secret was buried beneath the walls of this castle. I thought we were going up, it appears we're going down. Archaeologists who were excavating the 2,300-year-old remains found torture chambers and even a well covered in what appeared to be blood. But I'm here to explore how power changed hands. Spring 1326, Osman Ghazi lay terminally ill. His son Orhan was once again besieging the Byzantines and then news came to the dying leader of the Kai tribe. The Ottomans had succeeded in taking Prusa. According to local historians, he died soon after. The governor sent 40,000 gold pieces and expensive clothing to Orhan Ghazi as a gift of submission. And after Orhan conferred with his father Osman, he took the offer and this became the heart of the Ottoman Empire, but there was no murder and no killing. And the governor, his family and their entourage were given safe passage when they went to Istanbul. So that's the birth of the state right here, subhanAllah, the exchange of power. But I wonder what it was like for the people and what is left for us today. Actually, almost everything. It's beautifully preserved. And this castle is just an example of how well the Turks are doing in restoring and maintaining their history. But you know what? I really want to see the markets and I want to go get some food. Okay, two hours from Istanbul, not bad. But before we start anything, we have to take part in the Turkish tradition of a really nice breakfast with a great view. A visit to the Panorama 1326 Museum is a must. This depicts the Conquest Day in 360 degree circular cycle. So let's be honest, our point of entry for most of us is the Ertural series. So what I'm going to do is try and spot as many areas of Ottoman style life as I can. Let's have a look. So that's Orhan, okay? And there's his courtiers and there's the people, some of them Christians, coming to give him bayat, right? Can you see the Marids under the tree? Yeah, the Sufis under the tree having their simple picnic and their, their sohbah gathering. Women are our own community. We look after each other. So here we have symbolized the women doing their daily work, but together, not alone not this hyper-individualism. So often we're, as Muslim women, we're written out of the script, especially by Western sources, and this just isn't the case. If you look at early Ottoman life, we were the backbone of society, and they sold their goods. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> women are still the backbone of society. Don't ever forget it. In the exhibition hall, the conquest of Bursa and important traces and spiritual personalities left by the first six Ottoman sultans who were all buried in Bursa are examined. It is the largest fully panoramic museum in the world. The first Akche or Ottoman coin was minted in silver during the reign of Orhan Ghazi. The coins were inscribed with the name Orhan on one side and the word Torheed on the other denoting the oneness of God. You can mint a coin the old-fashioned way at the museum. Be warned, the hammer they use is seriously heavy. So this is a Gandhi bridge. 
And this is one of only four markets that are on a bridge in the whole world. One of the others being in Venice and another one in Florence. I forget where the fourth one is. It was built in 1444. And it's more evidence of the real importance of Bursa as an economic area of the age, subhanAllah. In 1640, Evliya Celebi came here and he said there were over 200 small shops on this bridge. It really reminds me of Mostar and that's not surprising because guess what? The link is the Ottomans. This is Ulu Jami and it's been the heart of Bursa for almost 700 years, subhanAllah. And it is considered the fifth most important mosque in Islam. I bet you didn't know that. Hang on a second, let's name them. Okay, so we've got Mecca, we've got Medina, yeah, okay, we've got Al-Aqsa, mashallah, we've got Damascus, and then you've got right here, Ulu Jami. Now I was trying to find out why that is, and here's the reason that's given, because it was built commissioned by Bayezid I, the Sultan at the time, to commemorate one of the biggest victories that Islam had had against the Byzantines in Nicopolis. SubhanAllah, it really is something very, very special. There are 192 calligraphy plates and pieces of art across the walls, all by different calligraphers. Bursa is called the City of Saints. It was an esteemed mystic of the period who read the first sermon at the opening of Ulu Jami. According to reports, Samanchu Baba baked loaves in the bread oven he had built. He distributed bread in the city streets with the cry of loaves, believers, loaves. So as with all great buildings, a lot of legends grow up around them. And this one, this beautiful mosque is no different. This beautiful fountain, you don't often see them right in the heart of mosques, it's so rare. Legend has it that an old lady refused to sell her house to the Sultan to build this mosque until one night she had a very intense and inspired dream and the next day she insisted on selling her little house to the Sultan. The architects who built Ulu Jami built this fountain in memory of her sacrifice and today people still make their wudu here. Allahu Akbar. So these guards here, they're not paid uh, actors to be here watching over the tomb for the amusement of the tourists. These are actually local gendarmerie and they are here to honour this tomb and to protect this great man. Osman Ghazi is the first Osman Khan. The Ottoman name comes from him, subhanAllah. He died either just before or just after the siege of Bursa. And he asked his son, Orhan Bey, to be buried in this, what was once a Christian church. Because the lead of the roof shone in the sunlight and still does. And it could have been seen by their troops over the time that they were besieging Bursa, subhanAllah. And this is where Allah allows him to spend the rest of the time until Judgment Day, subhanAllah. In today's polarized world, it seems that it's impossible to be both fair and just and strong and powerful or a person of faith yet a swordsman. But that's exactly who Osman Ghazi was. An excellent swordsman, excellent horseman, fair and just. He used to feed all the people of his extensive household with great food every day around midday. He was known for giving, taking clothes off his back and giving them to the poor. I'm going inside now, pay my respects. And what we do is we pay, pray Al-Fatiha for the deceased. Osman, translated Osman, 
translated Ottoman. SubhanAllah, what a legacy. So I've just come out of the tomb of Orhan Ghazi Rahimullah and his wife Nilifa, many of their children, grandchildren. And the feeling is really immense because it was Orhan who started to build the Kulia system based on the Prophet's version of a mosque, which was that it was a home to people, which was that everybody was fed, which was that you could be healed and cleansed. And I just wonder and ask Allah to bring us great leaders who care about the people rather than themselves and that we're deserving of great Islamic leaders inshallah and that's something to pray for as well as praying for Orhan Ghazi Rahimullah and his family subhanAllah may Allah give us great leaders again I mean I hope you get to visit this birthplace of the last caliphate of Islam three days in this region is a must and if you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel to help us grow in positive messaging and truths about Islam past and present. Salaam Alaikum.